cliffcentral.com. We're going to cry, laugh, and love. And we're going to do it together. The Life with Libang podcast. That is correct. Hello, how are you? Bonjour. Do melang, all the greetings in the world for you today. How are you feeling? I hope you're good. Welcome to another episode of Life with Lebang, brought to you by cliffcentral.com. I feel like I haven't sat in the seat for a while. It feels good to be home. It feels good to be back. It feels good to be hanging out with you and just sharing with you. And of course, as always, introducing you to some real game changes. And this week is, of course, no different. We decided to bring somewhat of a powerhouse into the studio today. We thought, you know what? There's always an opportunity to introduce you to people that have great stories, that are doing amazing work, and it's high time that we share those people with you. So this week is no different. I'm very excited to introduce you to my guest today. She, you know, I met her a couple of weeks ago at a a Women's Day function. And uh, you know when, like, someone's energy is just correct you know she greeted me she gave me this really great hug i was like oh i feel so welcome here so i feel also very very lucky to have her on the show as well um and i'm talking about a lady by the name of sanele lambo and she is yo like i was just telling her now that her cv is so impressive and you know when people are being like humble like no don't say that it is so impressive. She's done so many amazing thing, things. Right now, she's a marketing strategist and the head of marketing at Impact Group. But if I was to tell you every little thing that this woman has accomplished, we would be here for about four weeks. <laughs> so without any further uh, discussion, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I don't want to you know, take this away from you. I want you to share with the audience who you are where your journey began and how it is you got to where you are right now. Thank you for having me. Very excited to be here. Um, obviously, as, as she's mentioned, my name is Sanele Lambo uh, from KZN. I was born and bred in Newcastle and moved to Joburg um, in 2000. Um, I'm a daughter. Um, I've got four siblings, family of seven, very close with my sisters my mother was very strict, guys. I must tell you, my mother was very strict, but my dad was just so humble, so soft. Mm. So, so, so that balanced uh, the, the the two of them. So, yeah. So, I'm the last born in the family, um, which which uh, actually right now when you look at me, you don't say it because then I I just want to lead people. I just want to uh, contribute and 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 make a difference. But yeah, so that's that's really who I am. Sure. Um. That's an introduction. I mean, KZN, when I think about KZN in the, in the year 2000, it feels like a very long time ago. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and a lot and a lot has changed since then. A lot has happened since then. I mean, um, you know, just being a woman in business mm-hmm. as well, a working woman, that must have also, you know, played a big role in your growth, in yep. your evolution, in, in your career. So... You mentioned that you're close with your siblings. Huh? A family of seven. You yep. know, yeah, firstly, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and five girls. Five girls. Five say. girls. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah. What, what kind of impacted growing up with like your sisters and having that closeness with them have on, you know, your approach to work? You know, yeah. that, that must have really like shaped uh, a Definitely. lot of a lot of how you how you do things. Definitely. So I must tell you a story. So as I mentioned that my mother was very strict, right? So when somebody gets a hiding, all of us used to get a hiding. Oh wow. So <laughs> so whatever that we did, we did together. And that is what made us so close. Mm. You know, so because we, we actually were just like doing everything together and we knew once somebody does something, we're all going to get it. And it was just that. And even now, I really don't have friends. My sisters are my friends, Aww. which is so nice. I really feel sorry for my daughter because she doesn't have that yeah. because she's the only child. But yeah, so for me, that really shaped the woman I, I am. Even when I go through stuff, I know that I can pick up a call. I've got four soldiers who are going to be with me and wow. just doing the stuff with me. So I'm really, really blessed. That is that is like so beautiful Um, when I think about, you know, just the idea of having that kind of support structure. Yeah. yeah. It's it is so deep and it's so important. Yeah. And it can really make or break 
your experience of things, you know, knowing that you're going into something that could be foreign to you, but having your soldiers with you, you go in there so much stronger. You go in there confident. You feel like you can take over the world. Definitely. You must hear how our daughters, because funny enough, we also have got daughters. Mm. I think in the family, there's only two boys. It's like a lot of girls. Mm. And they really talk about how they envy the relationship that we have. Because yeah. when somebody is not around, the other person takes over. Like we are the moms. Mm. They call us big five. <laughs> <laughs> because and when a child has done something wrong, all of us will be there because now we, mm. we've really inherited our mom's strictness, which has really changed over the years for me in terms of how I'm really teaching my daughter. Mm. Because there are some things that were good that I saw from my mom, but there are things as well where I'm like, oh, she was a bit strict here. She should have just done things differently. Sure, yeah. sure. But I mean, at the same time, you know, the way we raised kind of, it obviously shapes us. But the beautiful thing about it is that we can take the few yes. things from it Definitely. and apply it to how we want to then raise Definitely. our kids. You know, we don't have to copy paste. Exactly. Because maybe not everything works. Exactly. You know, maybe exactly. some of those things, they yeah, can yeah. stay in no, those no, no. eras. Definitely. And you can see yourself as well. Uh, like I can see myself when I'm being my mom. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, I'm now the strict mom. Yeah. Let me tone it down a bit, you know, so that I can accommodate it. Because really how I was raised is different to how I'm raising my daughter. Sure. Like the times have changed. You know, sure. things have moved on and the, the way things are done now they're no longer the same so I've really learned to change and one thing that I actually wanted to just talk about um, because then as I was moving with my career I then had to move and, and move to Cape Town to work for one uh, big uh, retail company mm. and my daughter really took uh, a knock because she was then bullied at school mm. and I remember just thinking shame I have to go back home so I, I actually was gone for 10 months and I was like no I have to go back sure. and just be there for her mm. and that really really uh, impacted her and it in negatively yeah. and, and then when I came back uh, after like years later then that's when they were like no she's got anxiety and you know when I grew up we didn't understand what anxiety is yeah no what <laughs> is no clue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm actually really glad that you mentioned that because I you know I wanted to touch on a little bit about your career stuff yes. and you know all, all of your experience you know like I mentioned it's a very very <laughs> colorful CV I mean you've got a background spanning retail yeah. entertainment gaming advertising even financial services yes. um, you know you've got a unique skill yeah. which is set catering <laughs> to both B2C and B2B yeah. markets like yeah. people like that barely exist in anymore. Yeah. Uh, you've worked in industries, you know, like uh, Tsukhosan, Edcon, yeah. Holland, Woolworths, yes. Financial Services. The list is endless. How did you pull this off and still be a present mother to ensure that the, the, the kids are fine? You know, when they need you, you're there for them. Because this is a lot. This must have taken mm. a lot of mm. your time. Yeah. How did you pull that off? I must be honest, I don't know how. <laughs> that is the truth. But I think uh, one has to actually be intentional. I think for me in my life, I've always uh, really believed that you must be intentional in whatever you're doing. Mm. So I, from very early age, I knew that I wanted to be in marketing. That was another thing. So I, I feel like my life was destined to be where it needs to be. So I knew mm. and I understood that I needed to actually also balance because having a family and working was never easy. I, I remember actually when I was in Cape Town, I left both my ex-husband and my daughter behind. And sure. that was a difficult decision. Mm. And I had to actually think about it and say, okay, so the plan was that they were going to join me. But things just didn't work out in Cape Town. I was like, okay, I need to go back home. Mm. And there I was now having to make a call to say, okay, career, while we want to balance, but family needs me as well. Mm. I was lucky enough to then come back and still find a job in uh, at Soho Sun. So, yeah, so it's about being intentional and understanding that it's a balance. You need to balance. That's 100%. really what it is. I love the fact that you use the word intentional. Yeah. You know, I think that's a word we use on the show every single yeah. week because what is life if not intent? Yeah. What What is life without it? You exactly. know, if you don't actually make a conscious decision to participate in something or to want to improve yeah. your ways or to anything, then you'll just kind of just be flowing exactly you know so i love that you brought that work up so that word up so you have a 23 year old daughter yes. her name is zama yes. you know i've always loved the name zama yeah i always say to myself <laughs> if ever i get a chance i, I must call name my child one zama. of my many children will be zama. <laughs> so how did her upbringing shape your way of you know seeing the world you know when you look at her childhood her teenagers i mean now she's she's 23 yeah so you've done all of the yeah the other heavy yes. lifting now yes. you've kind of just let her fly yes you know when you look at her today and you think about all the many sacrifices that she had to make for her back in the day mm. and you know how, how just how you raised her and how she grew up as a concept what are your thoughts i think 
once again, you, you look back and you say, sure, I wish this child had siblings. You know, I think for yeah. me, I go back to that to say, shame, I wish she had siblings. But nevertheless, because she was the only child, then I became overprotective, right? Sure. So because she's the only child and I'm like, oh, so she's like an egg. But at the same time, my mother's traits came in where mm. I'm strict. So, so, so there was that whole thing of saying, I am strict, but yet I need to actually make sure that she's got a future yes. that is bright and she understands that she must work hard. Uh, that is one thing that I've always taught her to say, you need to understand you've got yourself. You've got yourself, so you need to work hard and make sure mm. that your dreams, you must follow your dreams. Always. That is one thing that I've always taught her. Mm. She must always follow her dreams, do what she wants to do. Forget about everyone else. Mm. Do what makes you happy. And that's how I've really raised her. And she is an amazing, beautiful little girl. I, I still call her a little girl. She's, She's a young girl. woman now. She is my yeah. little girl. I still see a funny yesterday. She was sending me a message when she got to work. She's like, Mom, I arrived safe. I'm like, I'm glad, Nana. You know, and I'm like, yo, she's 23. <laughs> <laughs> she'll but always be Nana in your she'll eyes. She'll always be Nana in my eyes. But mm. she's just this young woman who is just like I look at her and I'm like, she went through so much. And I remember when she was doing her matric uh, in 2018 and that's when she, she was diagnosed with anxiety and depression. Sure. So she didn't write her matric then. Mm. And uh, she then only wrote one subject and the following year she had to now study on her own. So we had to get a tutor. Unbeknown to us that she was being prepared for COVID because now, mm. <laughs> so she, she finished her matric now on her own. She wrote in June and she passed. Then she had to go to varsity. Mm. Now she's excited. She's in varsity. And then come COVID. 20, it, like it was like 2020. Now there is COVID. Yeah. And she excelled at varsity. Sure. So she actually graduated this year. And I look at it and I'm like, look at this. Mm. Once again, it's like there is a destiny. She was destined to be there. 100%. Yeah. If Zama were to call you today and yeah. say, hey mom, uh, so I've decided that I've chosen my career path and I want to be... A, an artist yep. I want to sing and make music and be famous that's what I want to do I want to be a social media influencer I want to do a YouTube channel and that's what's going to keep me afloat honestly honestly how would you act because I hear a lot of a lot of parents are like yeah my kids could do whatever they want to do and then comes the hour when the child says okay well mom dad I don't want to be a doctor I don't want to be a lawyer I don't want to be an accountant I want to be a creative. Mm. You know, usually parents freak out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You talk yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. So if someone were to call you today, honestly, suddenly, how would you react? I think <laughs> knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. I would say go for it. Sure. Knowing what I know now, I would say go for it. I was raised by a teacher and a nurse. And all my sisters actually are either teachers or nurses. So I'm the only odd one out. Yeah. But it's about what you want at the end of the day. Because I would choose a career for her and then she hates it. Wabo? So let her do what she wants. Yeah. That's really my advice. That's very nice. Yeah. And that's very honest. Mm. Um, yeah. I remember I was speaking at a, a graduation ceremony at Boston Media House. I was the guest speaker then. Yes. I was speaking to the, the, the graduates and yes. a lot of the people that were there were the parents in the audience. Yeah. So I was saying to them, you know, you guys grew up in a time where your career choices were either only teacher or nurse or policeman yes. policewoman Ronache, we've got options you know exactly. we live in a time where there's so many other things that we want to do and as parents please allow your children yes. to express themselves do you know how many parents came up to me after my speech yeah and were like you know you you've just opened my eyes yes. you've made me realize how hard i've been on my kids exactly. because i've been trying to push yeah. them into one direction yeah. Yeah. but after listening to you today i realized that i just need to let them do their thing let them and do their like, thing Hallelujah. Yeah. Let That's them do their it. thing. Because I think most parents, we want to fulfill our dreams through our children, right? <laughs> uh, maybe I didn't get a chance to be a doctor. So now I want my child to be a doctor. <laughs> sure, no. sure. Let them follow their dreams. Yeah, 100%. It'll, it'll make life so much easier. Well, yep. We're still going to figure out those of us whose children are still uh, growing. Yep. <laughs> so, Sanela, you're mar the marketing head at Impact Group. Yes. I mean, that it sounds like uh, a bit of a hectic job. Yeah. Does your daughter have any idea like what you do on a day to day? Does she know that, okay, mom wakes up at this time, she deals with this team, or is she just like, whatever you're doing, you have my support? I think um, I also, I'm going back to the intentions. I actually 
before she got this job, I used to take it to work. I wanted her to see what I do. I wanted her to get an understanding. Sure. But also I was preparing her for the workplace because now she just started a job. Yeah. So I wanted her to see and actually start to connect the dots as well to say when you get to work, how do you behave? Sure. Because mom at home and mom at work, two different people. Sure. So let's have a look and see how mom is when she's at work, who is not the mother that you see every day. Yeah. So, so I think, yeah, she's got an idea. That's good. So you almost like take bring your daughter to work day. Yeah, you yeah. did it intentionally. It, intentionally. Yeah. I wanted her to see it. I wanted her to actually experience it. Funny, this morning she says to me, Mom, my boss actually said to me, um, I need to impress her because she's doing an internship. Yeah. So if I succeed, then I'm going to have this job. I said, let me give you an advice. Just ask questions. Yeah. Ask your boss what does she need. Yeah. It's not about you. It's about her. So I think if 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 somebody gave me that advice, mm. I guess I'd be far. <laughs> <laughs> wow, who's to say you're not far? Because from where I'm sitting, you are pretty far. She's so lucky. Yeah, she's so lucky to actually have the kind of parent that mm. would think that far. Yeah, um, you know, as far as guidance, yeah. and even yeah. in the workspace where most parents would leave their children mm. to learn alone. Mm. You know, you're saying, mm. so let yeah. me show you the ropes, yeah. let me help you. I it's can. important. I think that is so cool. Like, it's what important. a head start. Yeah. You know, no, parents it's out there listening, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sanele, your focus is advertising, strategic yes. planning, brand management, project execution, as well as direct marketing. That yeah. it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Let's talk about your typical day uh, at Impact Group moments. Yeah. Like, you know, once you've had your first cup of coffee or yeah. tea, what does the rest of the day look like for you? Because <laughs> I remember being there uh, for the Women's Day event yes. and seeing so many women. Like there yeah. were a lot. I think there were over 200 yeah, yeah. people yeah, at that event. I was looking around and I was like, this is a <laughs> lot of people. Yeah. So what does an average day look like for okay. you, you know, in, in managing the work that you do at Impact? It's a lot. Eh? <laughs> Funny, yesterday I was saying I came to do something and I ended up doing something else. So it changes on day to day, but it really involves planning. It's planning the days, it's planning the, the events that we do. It's really sitting with our internal clients, as I call them. We've yeah. got three divisions within Impact. We've got a food division, we've got cleaning, and we've got facilities. They all have got needs. They've got clients that we need to satisfy. So the briefs come to me. This is the campaign we need. This is what we need. So my team and I, we sit together and we plan. It's yeah. really mostly the planning and checking the emails, making sure that things are working. Sure. Um you make it sound so easy. It's like, yeah, <laughs> the brief lands. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's not that easy, okay? I must tell you. There are times where actually I have to go back to people and say, sorry, you're not going to get that job in a week. You're yeah. going to get it into, because there's so many other things. So it's really about finding a balance, you know, and, and making sure that, and that's why we plan. Because if we plan, then at least we know. There will be things that will come and we must now juggle, but it's not every day. Sure. Yeah. Sadal, I'm so curious. Like from what I'm hearing, so there's obviously your team yes. that you manage and yes. work with very closely. Yes. Do you think you got an advantage by growing up around Girls. <laughs> girls, number one, because obviously girls run the world. We all know that. But having a supportive set of sisters, because yes. that essentially is a team. It is. Do you think that helped you in any way? Definitely. That I will definitely agree. Because as I said, when one is not there, the other one takes off. It yeah. takes over. Yeah. And and there's the the planning and delegation of tasks as well. Because there is five of you, then this one is gonna do this. I remember shame. My other sister, she she was actually very naughty because when <laughs> I was like nine years old, my mom taught me how to cook. Okay. But I was still not good. Mm. So my sister, who is four years older than me, would say, Okay. So give me your five friend so that I can cook for you Ooh. so that mom won't see. So, so, so there was that corruption there. She but, sounds like an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we are actually very close even uh, today because uh. she was like seeing that shame. This one is still young. So let mm. me help her. But she must pay. <laughs> <laughs> so she taught me that, that you work for whatever. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Learning such good skills from a young age. Exactly. I think if you if you have siblings and all the siblings at that, yes. you're going to get crooked at yes. one or other point. Yes. It's inevitable. It'll Definitely. happen. Definitely. Your things will get stolen. Your yep. things will get taken. But yep. there's always like a bigger lesson. Exactly. But the, there's taught. also a supporter in there because sure. I remember, so so you, you heard I, talk, I spoke about being, they call us big five. Yeah. So my mother, because she said we're too many, she She'll call us by numbers. So I'm number five. <laughs> so number two was always a protector. So when number four and number three were fighting and taking my things, she'll be the one who's like, no, leave it. It's for the baby. So yeah. I was the baby. Too. 
<laughs> I'm laughing at having to call you by numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was that thing growing up where uh, your parents would forget your yes, names. They'd yes, start yes, confusing yes, you. Yes, say, yes, mama, yes. Yes, yes. Hi, Nelly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm at that phase now yeah. where, like, I'm also starting to confuse my oh, kids. Oh, wow. How old, are, how old are they? Oh, So, my, my first boys are 11 and 9. Oh. And then my daughters are 3, 2, and 1. Oh, sweet man. So, it's oh, the girls. Where oh, I'm so like, you also... <laughs> I mean, I mean, Which one is this one now? I mean, and they even like, geez, mom, can you just can get you our just names remember right? exactly? So I'm actually maybe yeah. the numbers. No, the thing, numbers work. Maybe no, it's... even my mother's friends. That even now, people are still saying, "Oh, number five. Like, that is so funny. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious, man. Yeah. Sure. So suddenly, can you give us like a an overview of the final cut? I mean, yes. this is Impact's internal skills development program, which is for chefs, and it also highlights some of the key skills and knowledge areas um, that it aims to enhance among the culinary uh, team members. So there's a yeah. lot of catering-esque yeah. yes. uh, ad- advanced stuff yeah. that you guys are involved in, which I think is so cool because, I mean, everybody thinks they can cook. Yeah. As you just mentioned, you got taught by <laughs> exactly. the age of nine, but at you nine, knew you sucked exactly. at it. Exactly. <laughs> Some people still think they're yeah, yeah, good yeah. at it. Yeah. So it seems like you guys know exactly what you're doing. So tell us more about the final cut. Yes. So um, the final cut actually is our annual, um, it's a national annual uh, chef's competition. Oh, lovely. So um, my boss, Alan Queen, I have to just say, He's doing an amazing job. He's yeah. about people. Yeah. So this competition is really about also skills development sure. and actually empowering our staff as well. So it's a national competition. Uh, we get to actually get different chefs who are going to compete within their regions. They would then, uh, we select three from each region. So okay. we are in KZN, we're in Joburg, and we're in Cape Town. So then the three, six, the nine of those chefs will come now for a final competition where they're going to cook off. And they are really judged on the quality of the food, how it tastes, their innovation. So it's quite a, it's an intense, you, you know how a master chef is? Yes. So it's a similar concept. Oh. So they are now under pressure and you've got judges who are just not playing. Hey, yeah. They are really giving them these tasks and they must just showcase what they do. At the end of the competition, the winner walks away with 25,000 rand, oh, which is an amazing thing. So yeah. we really want to empower our people as impact. But we've got over 25,000 employees. So Whoa. you must know it's a big workforce, Whoa. right? <laughs> it's huge. So we really want them to feel that they are part of a company that is progressive, that is empowering them. 25,000 employees. Yes. That and is a lot of people. It's a lot, eh? And 70% of that are females. So we wow. are really intentional about empowering women we yeah. want women to be empowered we want our people we, we want to make an impact in the communities as well that we live in think about it if you've got twenty five thousand employees mm. the communities that they come from we sure. are making an impact through employment as well and when you think about the the role that women play yeah. in these very yeah. same communities yeah. Ukila Bona, yeah. these aren't just yeah Batofela, exactly. walking by. Exactly. You know, these are women that are making marks. They're adding raising value. the children. Yep. They're adding value. They're yep. building and growing the communities. Exactly. exactly. So uh, I'm actually very happy that this is the stance that you guys have yeah. have, have taken. You yeah. know, uh, it's actually reminding me of the day that I met you. I, yes. I think you're. Alan, you said? Alan Quinn, yes. Our he CEO. was there, no? He was there. He <gasps> welcomed the woman. He this is just, man is so his energy. funny. <laughs> and his oh. energy. He is just amazing. No, he really is. Like no. he got he got on stage yes. and he just started talking to everyone and he <laughs> yep. introduced himself. Yep. And I think we laughed for at exactly. least 30 minutes. No, he's awesome. He so really is great. awesome. No, he's awesome. It's it's great to have leadership that is about people. Sure. For me, that is really what makes my state impact. So I and I love what I do. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like I'm doing a job, right? Yeah. It feels like I'm adding value. Our our slogan says we want to do right. Yeah. We are on a journey. We're on a journey to do best and be the best. Yeah. And we want to do right to our people to our communities, to our clients, and also to the planet as well. Yeah. Yeah. That is so inspiring. So, Sanada, a lot of companies are increasingly focused on corporate social investment programs. I mean, every second or third company yeah. will have some sort of CSI thing that they're doing. What are some of the key initiatives that Impact has undertaken in this area? Um, I mean, you've already mentioned how intentional you guys are about hiring a certain percentage of women and, yes. you know, just being a, a company that is about its people and it grows the communities, etc. Uh, but can you tell us a bit more about the causes that impact is involved in? Yeah. So we describe the impact of our social relevance and social investment in our phrase that when we say we care, sure. doing right by you. Yeah. So I spoke about 
the community as one of that. So under the CSI element, we actually focus on the enterprise development. We focus on social, uh, corporate social investment yeah. and then sustainability. So there are three NGOs that we've actually selected to say we want to partner with them because we understand that their vision and our vision is aligned. So one of them is TS Foundation, okay. which also yeah. came on the Women's Day as well. Yeah. So TS Foundation, they focus on intervention that addresses GBV. So yes. that's what they do. Yes. Then we've got Med Center. So Med Center really is about addressing the meds literacy and numeracy skills, especially in the communities that need the help. Last year for Nelson Mandela Day, we went to uh, Tembisa, mm. where we painted the schools. Yeah. And not just painting the schools, it was about numeracy like teaching them the formulas and putting them there so that the kids understand sure you know because maths is not easy right i i suck at it maths but hey so these many kids of now, us do many of us <laughs> do right but these kids actually now get to see the formulas on the walls they get to understand what it is then the third uh, organization that we partner with, with is live village so live village is also doing an amazing work so we chose them for this year's nelson mandela day yeah. where we went to their villages they are in cape town Deben and here in Joburg. So our staff went for two days, may I add, Nelson Mandela Day and a day before, mm. where we really transformed the place. We painted, we spent time with the kids, we did garden. We really wanted to make an impact and we make a financial donation as well mm. because we understand that these uh, 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 communities that we, 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 we live in, they need the assistance. Yeah. So if we find NGOs who really are making an impact, mm. let us add value by actually giving back to them as well. Sure. You, you know, I've, I've, I've I've come to believe, Sanele, that CSI work is not just work that is needed on the one exactly. Mandela day. Exactly. This exactly. work is needed Sustainability, throughout. right? Exactly. We need to be there. And, and that's a nice thing that we actually have identified to say we won't just go there for Nelson Mandela Day sure. and clean and leave the money. So throughout. So these are the organizations that we are saying it's a long-term a relationship we one of our values is partnership right yeah. so if it's a partnership relationship what else can we do together to make an impact and make a difference in the community so mm. we even now some of our staff members they bring our cl their clothes we take it there so mm. it's not just a once-off thing 100 percent. I, I love that I, I wish more and more companies can almost be honest with themselves exactly. about exactly. The what are we doing Nenzan. yeah what like, are we doing are we actually making an impact yeah. or are we just ticking boxes exactly just because we want a, a point right exactly <laughs> exactly it's, it's really not about the point it's about making a difference and adding value so that's why for us it's really important when we say we care we must show that we care. We mustn't just say it. Mm -hmm. People must feel that we care. Oh, I love that. And people will always remember how you make them feel. That's it. Always. That's, That's like it. my life yeah, yeah. motto. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Everywhere it's not what you, you say, but how you made me feel. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sadala, can you share uh, some specific examples of, you know, some of the success stories from your CSI uh, programs, you know, especially maybe something that will highlight the skill building opportunities that, um, you know, that, uh, add value to the communities, to the individuals, and how these skills have translated to become meaningful improvements and really value adding, uh, you know, testimonies, yeah. I guess, that they can use for the rest of their lives and not just in that not moment. Just in that moment. Yeah. Okay. So another aspect then on our social impact and relevance is our ESD focus, right? So we believe that ESD is an investment with a purpose. Mm. So we've partners, partnered with different SMMEs. I can mention like two for now. So Kailicha Cookies is a, locally, a local bakery, which is in Cape Town. Okay. So when we actually started with them, we actually, there were four women that were in this program, right? So we trained them, trained them, taught them how to bake and, and gave them the skills. And actually, we also donated a car to the to Kailicha Cookies to say, wow. here is a car that you can use. You do your deliveries, do what you need to do. Mm. We are very proud that today we've got 86 people that are now employed at Kailicha Cookies. Wow. So those are the stories that really are making us to actually say we are making a difference. God we did. are making an impact mm. in the communities that we live in. Mm. So Kailicha, we've got a long-standing relationship with them. They supply us even now <laughs> with biscuits at our different units. You know, they're sure. in hospitals that we are in and they supply there. Another one is Queen's Bakery as well. So yeah. Queen's Bakery, we started with them. Also, we donated a car, started there and said, here is a car. Let's see what we need to do. 
Now and again, we bring them for training because it's important that we empower them. Sure. We give them the skills. So the, we are training with them as well to say branding, when they need branding, we do it because we need to make sure that there's sustainability in what we do. It's not just a once-off thing and ticking the boxes to say, yes, we are doing something, let's get some points. It's about making a difference. So for us, and I, I'm really grateful, Alan is one person that is about that. Yeah. He is very intentional about making a difference in the communities. I feel like next time you must just bring Alan. I will. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> and that's why before this interview, I actually phoned him. It would be so nice to have yeah. him because he is just amazing. I'm really happy if you guys can have him. He of is course. just. And, and his energy is just, it's, no, it's infectious, sure. right? Energy was <laughs> how, I, I was experiencing a lot of things on that yes, day. And yes. one of the things I won't forget is his energy yeah. was just, you know, it's difficult for a man to hold the attention exactly. of a room full exactly. of women. women. Yes. But he had us all yes. in the palm of his yes. hands because he was so yes. good yes. and so pure. And engaging, right? So engaging. Yeah. He was just speaking from yeah. his heart. That's and it. And that's that is it. always so much better than, and that's than who everything he is. else. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, so I don't know, what is the future of impact looking like? It, it sounds like you have pretty much got a lot of things on lockdown. Yes. As you said, this is a journey. Yes. You know, you're growing yes. with these partners and uh, the, 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 the groups of people that you work with. You're growing together. Yes. So what is the future for impact group looking like? I think that <laughs> the future is bright. Let's start there. <laughs> yeah. The future is engaged. The future is growing. Mm. Um, it, it, it's really connecting more with the communities, connecting more with our employees, connecting more with our clients, sure. right? Uh, because the connections are quite important. Uh, we, we, we're not living in an island. We yeah. are living with other people. Yeah. So it's really about connecting and, and really telling stories and also being inclusive. Let's find like-minded companies that we can journey together with sure. to make an impact. So that is the future of impact. It's about connections. It's about engagements. It's about really making a difference. Yeah. Yeah. It, it almost sounds like the future for impact is impactful. It is impactful <laughs> indeed. It is impactful indeed. And, and, and growth, you know, it, we, we really want to grow. And, and, and growth is not just going to be for us. It's going to be for our employees. It's going to yeah. be our partners. It's going to be our, our communities as well. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that. That's so exciting. Where can we find Impact Group on social media? If we want to, <laughs> you know, connect with you guys. Um, if there's some potential clients that yeah. are listening and they're saying, sure, like everything that Uwe Sanele is saying, I'm I feeling resonate. it. I resonate. I connect. It's making an impact on me. And that's how my company is also operating. And we want to grow together yeah. like that. How can they get a hold of you and connect with you? We are on a website. So it's www.impactgroup with an E. .co.za and then we're also on LinkedIn. Uh, you can also send us an email on info at impactgroup.co.za Beautiful. Awesome. Beautiful. Sanele, thank you so much for joining us this morning, for just taking the time to sit and connect with us. It was so nice to hear you know, a little bit about how you were raised and how much of an impact your sisters and having mm. your siblings made mm. on you and how that also informed how you became a mother yeah. and how all of that also informed how you became this powerhouse of a marketer that you are today. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me. And yeah, it was fun. Um, I think fun is a bit of an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> it was very fun. <laughs> very fun it was. Thank you for making it easy for me. As well. Of course, of course. And thank you at home for making the time to chill with us and to listen to us and to every single week take the time to connect with whoever Tepo the producer decides to bring onto the show Life with Lebang. And it's always something different and it's always something interesting. And if you're feeling inspired, if you're feeling moved, please make sure that you contact Impact Group and just touch base with them. I, I promise you being at the company a few weeks ago at that Women's Day event, there was just something in the air. And you can always tell when a company on the inside is doing well or if they're rotting. And the first thing I felt was these people know what they're doing. Everybody was smiling. Everybody was happy. And it wasn't because of the free food. <laughs> it was because there was such a great sense of community right from the CEO, right down to the lady at the reception, right next door to the mm. person that won't come to everybody you could feel was really respected on the same level. And that became very contagious to me. So I hope that inspires you as well. Thank you once again for choosing to hang out with me, Lebang Khosana, on A Life with Lebang. We will see you next week, same time, same place. And as always, love and light. Cliff Central.
Radio.com. We're going to cry, laugh, and love. And we're going to do it together. The Life with Libang podcast.